On the left, it's about to get nasty. It's Matt Nass. Grand Prix Oakland champion yep. with Elves, which is where he really made a name for himself. And he's the kind of player, and I'm sure during your playing career, you, you know this guy. I think everyone knows this guy. Of you know, He doesn't have like you know the top eights a lot, but he's the kind of guy who always finishes like top 16 in a Grand Prix, like that sort of thing, and then just kind of stays on the train that way, and that's basically what he's done. Adam Horvath. Sure. From my era. Sure. So Matt, Matt Nass is just playing blue-white, uh, much more of a, I guess, blue-white flash, but he's playing four guys the same trap, starting four guys the same trap, which is uh, not a card we've seen a lot of so far during this yeah, portion. Yeah, oddly enough, we haven't seen a lot of it. We're going to see a lot of it in this match because both players have four in their main deck. Max Seats is playing the blue-eyed mid-range deck that, um, you know, lists very similar that won the TCG, TCG excuse me, 50K um, with Thunderball Hellkite. And we've seen a lot of blue-white-red decks this weekend, but we have not seen very many with Thunderball Hellkite this weekend. Yeah, Thunderball, just a lot of power, very good at uh, attacking Planeswalkers. Certainly clears out some Lingering Souls and yeah. more than Haunt action. I mean... A lot of power in that card. As we see, Nass target himself with a Thought Scour. He revealed a more than Haunt and a Glacial Fortress. Uh, excuse me, I think that's an Azorius Charm actually off the screen as they'll move that on as we see Max cycle the aforementioned Azorius Charm. Yes. And we'll see if he does have a third land here to land what is one of the more important cards in this matchup, which is guys the same trap, but he does not. Matt Nass also playing Feeling of Dread, which is a card we've seen a little bit of play in the open series, I know we saw one in a, a blue eye red deck uh, in Las Vegas last week, but uh, not a card that's seen a ton of burn, and, and Matt is starting too. So we see Matt draw a Augur of Bolas for the turn. If Feeling of Dread is kind of an interesting card, it's a card that I think everyone, the consensus agreement is that it's really a very good card. Um, the most success that it has had is Alexander Haynes. Pro Tour win in his Miracles deck, acting as a makeshift moments piece, and it's kind of been interesting that it hasn't seen more play because it is very good against the aggressive decks, again, acting as that temporary fog. Yeah, and, and Matt's deck is definitely capitalizing it in a different way than the control deck you just alluded to, where he can use it to defend himself, but largely he wants to be using it to push through damage. Max attempting to resolve a Thought Scar at the end of the turn, and Matt's going to let that go. It's kind of interesting how that card... Feeling of Dread does really play favorably with Geist of St. Trap. Just be able to push it through. Yeah. See a Restoration Angel here at the end of Matt's turn after the Thought Scour resolved. Uh, blinking out the Augur Bolas and finding an Azorius Charm. So we'll see what Max is capable of here. Uh, taking a look at his deck list, one of the cards that you're not going to find here in the main deck, he does not have Supreme Verdict in his main deck. So once Matt is able to create some sort of war presence with the creatures, not actually able to get him off the board, he does have temporary solutions in Azorius Charm, Searing Spear, you know, can't take down a Restoration Angel, neither can Pillar of Flame. Um, and you're also going to find two Burning Oils, but he doesn't have that mass removal spell that you typically find in a blue-white deck. Yes. Also, uh... Yeah, Max playing two copies of Spectral Flight, which is another card that hasn't seen a ton of play in these blue-white, red mid-range decks. He doesn't have a ton of awesome targets for it. Really, only Geist of St. Traft is, is especially good with it. Yeah, trying to uh, combo off, as it were. So Max falling behind a little bit on the board here, which is a lot of what these tempo-ish matchups are about. Yeah. Because once you get on the front foot, with your cantrips and counters and bounce spells, it's pretty easy to stay there. So we see Max in his main phase, cast a Snapcaster Mage, flashback in his Orius Charm to cycle, uh, just looking you know, either for land drops or just a little bit of help as we see Matt Nash draw, I think, twice for his turn. Both players with full hands, so much cantripping. Recurring of cantrips <laughs> in these decks. <laughs> You see, Matt was looking to attack, takes a moment to reconsider some things very quickly, and he says, all right, here we go. In with the Angel, in with the Augur of Bolas. Going to play a main face Angel again, make sure it doesn't get countered to Augur of Bolas. I'm going to find myself a Thought Scour. So, man, he can't trip. <laughs> yeah, got, got to find those cards. <laughs> and now a Burning Oil here from for Max, and Burning Oil is a card that we haven't seen a ton of recently. It was kind of popularized by David Bauer and Harry Corvisi at the CCG 50 player, uh, TCG 50K, that tournament down there in Indianapolis a couple of weeks ago. Um, kind of an interesting removal spell. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't actually. I mean, it, it doesn't. The downside is obviously it doesn't always work. It's a pretty specific on when you can play it, but it definitely has the potential to, uh, you know, kill multiple multiple attackers or blockers in one card. Another good card to flip over with your thought scour, and so playing one or two copies it seems very reasonable to me. As we are going to see Augur Bullish jump in front of Snapcaster Mage, and we're going to see a Restoration Angel on that Snapcaster Mage, and a Thought Scour. Max is going to target himself, reveal more of the Haunted Searing Spear, and draw a Glacial Fortress. So both players, you know, casting a spell or multiple spells every turn, and still have com entirely full hands. Yeah. As we see, Matt finally does draw his fifth land, being that island. Might be able to do a few more things now. Maybe two spells in one turn. Maybe a spell plus a Moreland Haunt activation. And both players, you know, it, there's the potential threat of, of um, Supreme Verdict in both of these decks, but neither player cares too terribly much because their hands are loaded enough where they can still just play into it and have enough left over. As we see, an unsummon here on the Restoration Angel. Matt able to push through seven more points of damage. Of course, Snapcaster Mage, not a favorable block on Augur of Volos. So unsummon a card that's been kind of debated on why it's in these type of decks, but you see it being very useful in this current situation. Yeah, and it, it's, you know, once you have Snapcaster Mage and, and you're milling yourself for value, playing some situational cards like that, uh, you know, it's, it's very attractive. You know, the burning oils of the world. And unsummon is, is absolutely in that camp, especially when you're trying to fight... These decks built around, you know, there's these Hellrider, Thundermaw, Hellkite, Beatdown decks that are defining the format. On some is very good, because you often can't even allow them to get into their attack step with a card like Hellrider. Yeah. So. As we do see Snapcaster Mage come across here for Max, again, it's not going to be much of a great blocker, so might as well get in there. Yep. And we do see a Cavern of Souls here for Max as well, and we will find out exactly what that's naming from our spotter in just a moment for you guys at home. I think Max is trying to go to the discard here, so we're going to see Matt use his Moral and Haunt. Oh no, he's Sink Poising. And now we see the cycling of an Azorius Charm as well. Looks like Matt's got another Unsummon in his hand. As we see Max discard for the turn, he does just kick it back over to Matt as Matt draws a Sphinx's Revelation for the turn. And if he does have another unsummon, it's, I mean, the game isn't over over, but it, it feels close. Well, I mean, the, the, the attack we have coming across here is for lethal, right? Yeah, I mean, what's, what's likely going to end up happening, as we saw Cavern of Souls was named on Angel, is that Restoration Angel will come in, it'll blink a Snapcaster Mage, and then Snapcaster will be able to get in front of an Augur of Volos, but it will still leave him very low. There might be another, another turn or two here, but I think yeah. this one is in Matt's favor. We another, just see an unsummon here. Another unsummon on Restoration Angel? Yep. Matt just trying to close the game out. Normally not, not a card you want to be bouncing a bunch, but <laughs> yeah. Matt can sense of the... Uh, he's within striking distance. Yeah, I mean, it's working out well right now. Did that's for sure. Kurt Kalos, are you in the room? We see an Azorius charm. Kurt it's interesting. This is the kind of card... You know, that you don't really want to counter very often, but this is a situation where you would. Um, I know you have Matt's deck in front of you. Does he really have any counter magic in his deck? Matt has two Dissipates. Okay, so that's it? Yes. And I assume we would have seen a... I, I guess he wouldn't have really had a window to Dissipate this turn. That would have been the first good shot. But... Yeah, Matt. Matt's not going to fight over that. That is Aureus Charm. Just happy to knock Matt, Matt, uh, Max down to three here. And now we will see. Assuming we're flashing back our Think Twice. That's what it looks like. He does draw the Restoration Angel, get that out of the way, and he's going to Augur Volus now as well. Let's see if Matt's able to find anything. And you've seen a lot of, you know, the and there's Feeling of Dread, which is awesome against Max trying to stabilize this board with, uh, with Restoration Angel. Yeah, that feels like a backbreaker right now. Yeah. And it is interesting, one thing that you did bring up when we talked about Burning Oil is that it, it's a very hit or miss card. And yeah. you can see, like, right now, it's just very, very miss. Yeah, very miss. I mean, if you played against a deck like Rakdos, 
maybe you played against a deck like green white humans that card would just be awesome yeah you know and if it's efficient the first time around and then basically free the second time around yeah just kind of a, just a threat there in the graveyard yeah but definitely does not line up well against three fours <laughs> Max struggling to find some way to, to block out of this board, but that feeling of dread makes it so hard. Especially with that Restoration Angel that Matt has actually just being lethal. Yeah. And you know, it's easy to compare feeling of dread to a card, to a card like Moments Piece, depending on what your deck is trying to accomplish. But like right now, if let's say for example that feeling of dread was a moment's piece wouldn't really yeah. do very much yeah. where feeling of dread lets you play a little bit offense a little bit defense it's a two-way player so max sends in his snapcaster mage matt blocks with auger bolas and max is going to use burning oil to get it out of the way and guys is saying trap plus spectral flight so he can actually block the restoration angel now yeah he actually he actually beats the restoration angel in combat now so that's pretty interesting, and then yeah. we were, you know, kind of mocking Burning Oil a little bit there, but it actually did, it, it felt like it did something, I mean, relevant on that turn. Oh yeah, for sure. Once we see Matt draws a Snapcaster Mage here. Uh, I'm not sure if Matt was anticipating that sequence of cards there. No, Pretty I'm... much the only way for Max to have a shot of stabilizing. Yeah, two, two very underplayed cards in Spectral Flight <laughs> and Burning Oil, and that was like the perfect combination. Yeah. You can tell Matt, Matt's body language was definitely on the previous turn. It's like, yeah, I'm just sort of going about my business, easily yeah. pushing this through. Now it's got to slow down and think because the game got a little bit more complicated. Yeah. And he does just pass back now. Right. So Max Teets turning some things around. As you guys see Spectral Flight on the screen, it might as well just say Spectral Geist of St. Traff because yeah. that's, who, that's who it partners up with the most. Yeah. I mean, you know, Matt still has a ton of gas. He has Moreland Haunt and a full hand of cards. So. Yeah. I assume we're going to find a way to cobble together the last few points here. But it was looking like Matt was just totally blowing him out of the water. And now, as we do see a Snapcaster Mage here for Matt on the end step, we'll see exactly what he's going to target. It looks to be a Thought Scour. And he's going to draw himself a new one which is a Geist of St. Trapped, which is a favorable draw step here for him. Yeah, it's legend rule time. Yeah, it, it very well may be. We'll see if Matt's going to activate Moreland Haunt. Maybe he'll do some cycling. And it looks like we are going to have a Moreland Haunt activation here, removing an Augur of Bolas. So we will have a Spirit Token coming in in just a moment for you guys at home. And now we could see a legend rule time. We could see something as simple as... You know, feeling of dread trying to tap down the Snapcaster Mage and getting in, so... Yeah. I, I had to assume we're going to try to lead off the turn with, with legend, legend rolling here. Yeah. Uh, any caverns for Matt in his decklist to push this through? One. Just one, okay. One cavern. You just saw another Geist? Yep. Might make it easier now. Interesting tapping of mana. Okay. It's happening this way, he can't cast the other one, assuming that there is another one in his hand. Alright, okay. that takes care of that. Now, we know, obviously, that there's a Restoration Angel. Now, of course, when you're, whenever you're playing against blue-white-red mid-range, you know, there is a threat of a card-like uh, Searing Spear, and we also know that there is a Burning Oil in the graveyard for Max to flash back, so is this attack going to get it done? I mean, you know, there's... Max is actually starting to run low on resources. He's down to three cards in hand. So even if this alpha doesn't get it done, you're sort of compelled to, to push because Matt's got a lot of resources to work with. He's just trying to close this game out. All right, and there's the concession. Okay. So we have Matt Nass up a game here yeah. with his blue-white, basically a blue-white Geist of St. Traff deck, even though we didn't really see it that game. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. I mean, we've seen a lot of blue-white-red tempo decks. We've seen... You know, a variety of Restoration Angel Snapcaster Mage decks in three or even four color shells. Matt's is super streamlined. Yeah. Just only two colors, a lot of cantrips, a lot of tempo plays. Guys are saying trap. It um, harkens back a lot more to the Delver deck of the last season, 
than sort of the blue, white, red, or blue, white flash decks that we've seen popularized over the last couple of months with Return of Ravnica. Yeah. Now, looking at, I have Max's sideboard in front of me about things, just ways that he can kind of fix this matchup up a little bit. Um, he does have access to some interesting cards here. Is Ecstatic Caster being one, a card that's been really rising in popularity? I'm not quite sure if this is where it really is going to be at home. Mm -hmm. um, we also have a couple copies of Thalia Guardian of Thraben with how much cantrip when we saw the last game. It can really put a, really put a stop to that. Purify the Grave, obviously, to break up some Snapcaster made shenanigans along with Moreland Haunt. A Detention Sphere, a Supreme Verdict, uh, an additional Pillar of Flame, a Dispel, and Two Negates. Um, I mean, all of these cards are... They're interesting because they, you know, they do like they do a lot of different things in a lot of different areas of the matchups that they're meant for, and it's kind of hard to say exactly which ones that Max would want to, or yeah, that Max would want to bring in here. Yeah, and and, and Matt's got sort of the same uh, same situation here. He has access to Jace, Memory Adept, Dispel, and Supreme Bird. Three copies of each of them in the sideboard, so he can actually take a very controlling role in this matchup if he wants to. He could cut cards like Feeling of Dread, maybe some of the Unsummons, maybe some of his just more. Like, only good while he's attacking, only good while he's on the front foot type of cards. I'm actually kind of sideboard into a Jace Supreme Verdict control shell. Sure. And because Geist is probably the best card in this matchup, just like the kind of card that can just steal a win immediately, especially when you're on the play, it's kind of interesting because both players do have Geist the same Trap, yes, but at the same time, if, you know, player A, uh, let's say you, for example, have Geist the same Trap and I don't, and I don't, you know, am I unable to find one? You know, am I going to consider boarding in Supreme Verdict just to have a hedge against opposing Geist? Well, it might actually be better just to, I mean, it might be better just to take a more controlling angle to the matchup uh, in general. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if Matt had the sideboard in part because when he's playing against control decks, they're going to be bringing in a lot of cheap answers to threats, more sweepers, what have you. And so having access to, to go to a different angle here uh, seems pretty valuable. Additionally, the Geist is trapped, I think, you know, it's the most significant card in the matchup. It, there's not, it, there's nothing you can really sideboard to answer that thing other than sweepers and your own Geists. No. So I have to assume you have to, you have to do, make some effort to control that situation. Yeah, I don't think you can just hope that, you know, you draw your Geist for their Geist, and then if you don't, you go, oh, whatever, I guess I'll lose. Yeah. yeah I, don't <laughs> think, I don't think that's a, that's a, a very good strategy, and I think we'll probably see some number of Supreme Verdicts in these gentlemen's deck list for these next couple of games as we see Max keep his opening seven and Matt is going to go back for six. Now, of course, Patrick, you know, it's it's not free to be able to play these red cards in um, the deck that Max is playing. You know, you have to alternate mana base a little bit. There are draws that you can have that contain Sulfur Foles and Cliff Chopper Treats acting as coastal towers and slow lands. But, you know, the upside of this is that you do get to play powerful cards like Thunderball, Hell Kite, and Searing Spear and Pillar of Flame and Izzet Charm. Um, you know, do you lean one way or the other, being just a straight blue-white deck versus the splash of red that Max has going on here? Uh, well, I, I, I mean, part of it just matters on how aggressive the format is. If the format's super slow and you can afford to, like, play some Coastal Towers or pay too luck to play a Ravnica land on tap, then that's fine, and it, it's probably worth adding the power. The faster the format gets, the more those hiccups to your draws and the extra points that you're taking off your lands really add up, so... Uh, a lot of it has to do, I believe, with where the metagame's at. As we are going to see these Coastal Tower-type cards do their impression here, and this is one of the draws that you see Max lead off a little bit slowly uh, that happened to me when I was playing the deck in Vegas last week, and I had what I called the Coastal Tower draw where I was getting my brains kicked in by by Black Red Zombie yep. deck. Whereas if one of those lands would have come into play untapped, I think it would have been okay. But, I mean, that's, again, part of what happens when you play this kind of deck, as we do see an Augur of Bolas here from Matt. Finds a cantrip. I think Matt's hand is pretty shy on lands, so. Yeah, the lands, the dual lands are very powerful and they enable a ton of awesome stuff, but they are not, they are not free. As there is the end boss in Geist of St. Traff, and you see Matt Thought Scout and revealing Geist of St. Traff of his own, and does he have that third land? No, but he does have a Geist of St. Traff in his hand. And we also did see a Supreme Verdict there as well. But again, Geist is a card, and we know this from plenty of experience. It does not take long no. to get it over with. No. So, Spirit in for four. 
I think Geist might be the king of no must, no fuss, as you say. Yeah. And now we see a Thalia Guardian of Thraven. So Max is stuck on lands a little bit here. And Matt draws a Dissipate for the turn, so no land for him as well. And this is a, a Thought Scour here. Matt desperately needing a land, and he does not mm -hmm. get one. Pretty curious to see, uh, you know, Thalia in the sideboard of Max's 30 spell deck or whatever, but <laughs> yeah. it's very good here. I think Matt just moving to discard. Max the keeping mo the, the pressure most, on. The most frustrating is, uh, you know, stalling on lands and uh, and having to discard in a game where you already mulliganed. So yeah. it's like very hard to get to that point. Yeah. And he does draw an island. Okay. So Matt is going to be able to get back in this game a bit by just legend ruling the guys to St. Trath. There's a th there is a value, of course, that he still does need to deal with, and it depends on what Max has, but we know that Max has a boatload of cards in his hand, and a guy's just seen a trap for the draw step. Yeah. Ain't so bad. Another ba backup guys for Max. Matt just not getting any breathing room here. Half. I can't. Matt's looking basically like he's beat here. I don't yeah, you can yeah, he can't get yeah. it out. You can see the frustration, just the, wa the, the water coming up the ship. Yeah. And guys, St. Traft putting the nail in the coffin. So we are going to go to a rather quick game three here as Max Teets was able to take that one in rather quick fashion. And that's just the power of guys of St. Traft. It's not as good, of course, as it was back in the Delver days. Yeah. Um, but it still can just steal a game if you play it on turn three and able to protect it from turn four forward. And certainly these decks are all kind of be kind of built to do the same thing. Like, get on the front foot with Geist of St. Trap, yeah. and then clear out blockers, tempo out plays, what have you. Uh, and so, certainly when one of the decks is, is stalling lands or not functional in some way, Geist is going to be quickly game over. Yeah. So as we see both players just kind of reaching re reaching through their sideboards, you know, reconsidering options. Matt is already shuffling up here for game three, basically saying, how about this time I draw some lands? Yeah. Try to interact with you a little bit. And I'm, I'm interested to see if he sideboarded... Um, I, I mean, I have to assume Supreme Verdict is, is for matchups like these. Yeah. Um, I, I'm more curious to see Jace, because that's, of course, much more geared towards control decks. Sure. Just pure control decks. And if he's sided in Jace, it basically means he's overhauled the deck entirely. Supreme Verdict and Dispel are easy to justify, even if you're keeping in your sort of the same shell of the deck. Sure. So. And one of the interesting things here just about, about these decks now these blue-white geist type decks that are basically you know playing the role or attempting to play the role of delver in this format is you know you had a lot easier time with the delver decks actually being able to find the cards that you needed because of ponder because of good tax intro because of all the cantrip you do with snapcaster mage but now the, the resources aren't there to do that thought scour isn't the same cycling azorius charm is just not the same yeah. so you know the, the games where you do have guys the same trap you your deck does look great but the games where you don't you do kind of fumble around a little bit looking for it you know the loss of, of Ponder and Mana League especially damaging to these kind of decks. Um, his Ponder is not only good with all the same, you know, Snapcaster, Rude Cheddar Spike stuff. Just the level of consistency it adds to your deck means that you're just sort of getting percentage points in all of your matchups by having it in the deck. Mana League is also just... These decks now have to struggle to react to, well, I need to fight these 12 different cards, all of which require different sorts of solutions. The cards you want to fight Restoration Angel with are different than Thundermar Halkite, are different than Sphinx's Revelation, are different than Thrag Tusk, etc., etc. Yep. Mana League catches all that stuff the exact same way, yep. so you have to worry a lot less about the specific, you know, the metagame moves here or there, or this, you know, this deck randomly showed up a lot in this tournament. Mana League gives you a lot of insurance uh, about your, your deck being metagamed incorrectly, and that's not the case anymore. You have cards like Burning Oil, which is sometimes awesome and sometimes doesn't doesn't work. Yeah, it doesn't burn anything. Yeah. As we do see a turn one Hollow Fountain coming to play untapped, which is going to lead to a Thought Scour here for Matt, revealing two islands and drawing him a card. Takes a draw first. Takes a draw first turn as well, which is Restoration Angel Hollow Fountain to play tapping. He's going to kick it back to Max. Max, looking at looks like a Moreland Haunt and a Thalia. Now, Thalia doesn't do a nice job of, you know, stopping what we saw in Game 1, which is the cantrip nonsense of, you know, just trying to, you know, filter through all of the cards to, to build a perfect hand. It does a nice job of stopping that as we see a Glacial Fortress here. It also does a nice job of, of blocking guys to St. Traps as well. Yeah, for two, a two-power first striker is nicely matched up for the job. 
Let's Mac. see a dispel drawn there for Max. Max, it uh, looks like he has a Glacial Fortress in his hand that's going to be coming into play tap, which uh, would prevent him from casting the Dispel in his hand. So, again, you see, even in, in, even in the event that someone's able to cast all their spells, their color mana lines up the right way, there's definitely opportunity costs associated with building your mana base this way. Yeah. And you are going to see a Cavern of Souls, and there's, there's guys. a Dyson Saint Trap. So now Matt is going to have to really start moving as we are going to see something on the end phase here. Yeah, I mean, he needs to find some lands in Supreme Verdict would be ideal. Indeed. And Matt actually has Dissipate in his hand, but Thalia and Cavern both have that yeah. covered. I think Matt's debating between unsummoning the Thalia or not. Because he can unsummon the Thalia and Thought Scour or just cast the Thought Scour. Tough situation when you're just so bottlenecked on mana as we see Thought Scour here. And he's going to draw Matt another, another Restoration Angel, yeah. I believe. He really needs to land here, and he does find a Moreland Haunt, so that's not bad. Yep. So, I mean, Restoration Angel is pretty well suited just as a flash blocker here. Yeah, especially with Max, as he's going to main phase it right now, especially with Max not having any blue mana. Yeah, just not getting greedy there at all. Probably not going to bluff Max here. Don't want to just play into, you know, a Syncopate or an Essence Scatter that Max might have. Just cast your card. It's, doing, it's going to do very good work in stabilizing the board here. You know, by the look of things, it doesn't even look like Max can attack this turn. So, you know, maybe there's, a, maybe there's an incoming Spectral Flight, but we do see Glacial Fortress. He doesn't even have the untapped blue mana. So, Max gets a nice turn of Reprieve here and see if he can capitalize on it. As we do see another Moreland on, and he does just pass back. Yeah, now Matt's got his, uh, his Geist, uh, sorry, his, his Restoration Angel, rather, protected by uh, at least one, possibly two Dispels in his hand, yep. and the Dissipate. So he actually can, even if Max has ways to clear it out now, Matt, Matt might have him covered. Do you see Max is going to take two here? This might be a Thundermaw Hellkite we see, as he was happy to take two from the Steam Vents. Yeah, I, I mean... Oh, it looks like he is just passing back, so no no big finish. I think maybe he just took the two there because he is, again, maybe representing a Dissipate like Matt is. We are going to see a Snapcaster Mage here on the end step for Matt. Just trying to continue to push through his deck. Flashback a cantrip. All that cantripping. You love it. I do not love it. Oh, you don't. You don't. <laughs> it's okay. Sorry. <laughs> it's all right. As we are going to see another Thought Scour here, revealing a Plains and a Moreland Haunt is going to give Matt a mystery card. And now, now that uh, that Snapcaster Mage stays in play, uh, Matt can really start leveraging the other copy of Restoration Angel in his hand. Yeah. You know, play Restoration Angel, flash back another cantrip. Now, the board stable have two Restoration Angels. I can start hitting with one and leave one back. And Max is still just kind of fumbling around here. And right now, we are going to see a Thought Scour here from Max. On Matt's end side, revealing an unsummon as Supreme Verdict, he's going to draw himself another Thought Scour. And the card that was drawn off of Matt's Thought Scour for you guys at home was a Supreme Verdict, so there is one looming there as we see Thought Scour number two with a Snapcaster, a Geist, and drawing Max. A mystery card. Steam Vents, really I believe. Steam Vents, okay. And now a Sulfur Falls. So. Max does have his mana on, you know, online now. Now it's just about crafting a game plan and trying to get through exactly what Matt's doing. This is probably going to be pretty back and forth, honestly. Yeah, uh, Matt's deck just strikes me as a lot more efficient in terms of the way the matchup is going to be playing out. His deck strikes me as a lot more streamlined. Basically because the right cards just don't seem particularly good in Max's deck in the matchup. Thundermaw Hellkite's obviously a a powerful card, yeah. but doesn't seem like the most meaningful thing in the matchup. Matchup's a lot more about sort of getting out on in front, sort of leveraging the pressure that you can make into damage, closing the game out with tempo plays, and less about big haymakers like Thundermaw Hellkite attack you for a bunch. Yeah, I feel I definitely agree with that. As we see Sulfur Falls coming into play here. 
And both players do have Moreland Haunts as well, so they can grind each other out that way. I think we're uh, going to have to buckle down here a little bit. Settle in for a long haul. That's right. I actually don't think Matt is that far away from being able to really start getting some pressure on. Well, speaking of pressure, Max is going to give it a shot here with the Thunder Mall Hulk Kite. I'm not sure if that, I, I don't know if that cavern's on Dragon. That obviously is very impactful about on whether or not that thing is going to resolve. Uh, that cavern earlier, I'm fairly sure it's either Spirit or Cleric. We are checking right now, uh, just because I know that's how he cast Geist on turn three after Thalia. I thought he had, I thought he had blue and white off two other duels. No, he, uh, his he first Moreland duel, Haunt. Yeah, Moreland Haunt. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Yep, you're right. So now Dragon is coming to play, and now it's kind of up to Matt if he wants to let it resolve. And it's kind of curious that he is giving this such consideration, knowing that he has a he has a dissipate in his hand, because he may just not care. Well, I, I think the, the the other side of the debate is whether or not he just wants the supreme verdict away the board that Max has at this point. Okay. Yeah, he's gonna let it in. So yeah, I think this this sequence represents that Matt's about to. Is, is committed to Supreme Verdict the next turn. Okay. And there's Big Papa. Oh, yeah. Go, Big Papa. It's actually hilarious to me now that there was ever a debate when this card came out about whether or not it was good enough for tournament level play. Yeah. <laughs> there were two cards that I think Delver kind of, like, pushed away that didn't... Uh, there were two cards that I felt that Delver just, like, wouldn't let be played. Yeah, That I thought sure. would be really good. I thought this was one of them. I thought Sublime Archangel was the other. I'm just like, those cards are just both preposterous. Like, how yeah. are these not in decks right now? As we do see Max coming across with the team outside of the Geist Sink Trap. So I assume we're going to be... I mean, we're probably just chump blocking Thalia here because we're committed to yeah. this Supreme Verdict plan now. It does seem like he is very much on the Supreme Verdict plan at this point. So that means nine coming across to Matt's chin. All right, and so what we'll probably see this turn is he does draw another Supreme Verdict. Yeah, I get you for three. Let's clear up the board. And let's try this. Uh, let's start this over. It'd be interesting to see if Matt has a land here. I don't think so. I think he's he is exposed currently to mm. a follow up Thundermaw Hellkite. That's that's gonna be tough for him. I don't know. Does Max have it? I don't see Hollow Fountain. No, it looks like his hand is just a couple counters and a Thalia. So now this is where potentially players move to the next phase of the game, which is. The moral and haunt grind downs. Yeah. And there is the Thalia. There's a hollowed fountain. And we know that Max's hand, he has a dispel, but not too much else. Is that a counterflux? Uh, I believe there are two counterfluxes in his main deck. Um, I wouldn't be surprised. I think there was one in his hand, yeah. And and Matt with an excellent draw of Augur Bolas here, which means that he doesn't have to worry about the Thalia beatdowns anymore. That's pretty nice. Hit three. What do we find, Mr. Nass? Is that a Sphinx's Revelation? I do see Revelation among mm. them, and that's an, that's an easy one to take. Yep. We're entering the phase of the game where that card resolved is basically game over. Yeah. And looking at Max's deck list, he doesn't have any Sphinx's Revelation, and these mid-range decks typically don't have them, while Matt has three. Three, yeah. yeah. And that's... Yeah, that's why, you know, more about why I felt Matt Sek is just a lot more streamlined for the matchup. Yeah, Sphinx's Revelation and Augur Bolas, so there's a lot of pressure on Max's individual cards to be meaningful and, and relevant because Matt's going to easily out-card him over the course of the game. And right now you see Max take the opportunity to make a Spirit Token, and Matt has been very good with these Restoration Angels. Not just, it's so important not to get too cute with this. Yes. You know, don't let it get counterspelled. The shields are down right now. The 3-4 body is just super important. And he's going to get another card off of Augur of Bolas, especially with, obviously, Thalia not allowing Max to do anything about it. And we do yeah. see a dispel here. Yeah, so Matt's building up this awesome hand of multiple dispels. Swings his revelation. Just, just incredibly efficient. Oh, 
Well, Max, Max is trying to kind of cobble together, cobble together these disconnected pieces into a a powerful deck, a yeah. powerful game plan here. It's much harder to do. Matt's cards are acting, asking a lot less of him to be effective. Yeah. And that's part of the reason I, I definitely agree with you. It's part, it's part of the reason I just don't... I'm not, I haven't fallen in love with this blue-white-red deck. Yeah, the incentives... The red cards have to be incredibly good to make it worth. You're just watching Matt's deck, and it almost feels like something has to actively go wrong for him to lose the game. Yeah, it just feels so much smoother yes. is the word, that, the word I want to use. Whereas it really feels like, as you said, Max is just kind of trying to, trying to cobble some things together. You know, like Thalia in this cantrip deck just seems so out of place. Yeah. It's like, can Thalia be good sometimes? Of course. But do you want to be drawing cards like Thalia when Matt's playing cards like Augur Bolas, Restoration Angel? It's yeah. Like you're kind of, you're asking for a lot to go right for that card to be effective. And of course, the absence the absence of Sphinx's Revelation also puts a lot of pressure on Max to win the game quickly, because Matt's game going late is overwhelming. Yeah, and I mean, it's important that Max's draw steps are very, very good, and as we've seen in the mid-game here, they haven't been, and there isn't an awesome card in his deck like Sphinx's Revelation to, you know, break through these bad draws. I mean, look at Matt's hand right now. He's got Sphinx's Revelation, he's got another Supreme Verdict, he's got multiple Dispels. It's just very... It's just hard for... Max to push anything forward. Yeah. And in and, and these blue mirrors, and I know, you know, we don't play blue decks a ton, but, you know, understanding of the game, it, it is really about, you know, card density and seeing as many cards as you can in a game and just overpowering someone with a, with a powerful card drawing spell when you get into a situation like this, and Max just doesn't have access to them. Right. That's another, and that draw step's another perfect example. He drew a Searing Spear. Can Searing Spear, Searing Spear be good? Sure. There are going to be spots for us, okay? But it's hard to... It's just hard to win when you're drawing Thalia, Searing Spear, Dispel. Like, these things need a lot of specific boards to all piece together into a powerful package. As we do see an attack here from Max. I assume this is going to draw out a... Uh, Max very clearly signaling either Searing Spear or uh, possibly Burning Oil. Yeah. And we are going to see a Moreland Haunt. You don't see the token there, but it does get in front of some things here. And Matt ends up taking one. And I think we may see the Searing Spear here on the Angel to take care of it. Soon we will, we're willing to dispel this. Yeah, I think this is worth fighting over, especially yep. because he has an additional dispel in his hand. But he's going to go with Unsummon. To get a little yeah. more value off the Augur of Volus. And the Unsummon is just also just harder for him to use on Max's board because he has no, no guys. Yeah. And now we're going to see a bit of a fight here. We're going to see Dispel on the Unsummon. And I do like how, you know, Matt, Matt made a little fight over it. Not a huge fight. Yeah, he got to trade his Unsummon for a Dispel. Yeah. The attack only dropped into nine. It was, you know, he was willing to jab a little bit over it, but don't make a big fight out of it. It's only allowing Max to push through a Moreland Haunt token potentially, which Matt has covered by his own Moreland Haunt. So if you're willing to fight to get a little bit of, of value, that's fine, but you don't actually need that Restoration Angel. As we are going to see a Supreme Verdict here from Matt Nass. Gonna clear off that thigh. He's tired of seeing that there, and he does just pass back with the dissipate up that he know that he that we know that he has. Max will get a Moreland Hunt activation, so it looks like Matt is gonna end up taking one. And I think at the very the, least. I think part of the reason Matt wanted to do this, even though Max's board is not that threatening, is a he has a hand of Sphinx's Revelation and multiple dispels. So the Thalia actually puts a pretty big crimp on what he wants to do in the event that he's trying to push through Revelation with dispel back up. Yeah. It's like all right, well, now the Thalia is basically taxing you too, and when you're trying to expel your opponent, it's, you know... You just want that stuff out of the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wants to just be able to set this up. Now, what he doesn't know is that Matt, Matt has counterflux, so it's actually not easy. You know, he has a good answer in his hands to the Sphinx's Revelation, but without that information, Matt's play makes a lot of sense, even though Max's board was not what you would normally deem to be 
you know, supreme verdict worthy. Yeah. It was just the Thalia. Nothing horribly threatening. Yeah. So we're going to see two more attacks here from Spirit Tokens. And we are going to see two more Lenhaun activations here from Matt. So he's just going to block, block. And this is another advantage that Matt's, you know, the streamlined nature of his deck has. Is he can actually fit in three copies of Moreland Haunt in his deck, whereas Max can only play the one. No. And so we see a Restoration Angel here drawn for Matt. It looks like Matt is likely just going to pass it back. And again, he is sitting so well right now. Yeah. He just has to check himself against Thunder Maw Hellkite, basically, but he has uh, Moreland Haunt still there as insurance, even if that card resolves. He can chump block it and then address it on his turn. Okay. I think for, for Matt, there isn't really anything that he really fears very much right now. He's done a nice job of getting himself in the position that he's in. And again, because Max is going to be living off the top of his deck, as you see, he does draw a Restoration Angel and doesn't have that Haymaker in Sphinx's Revelation. And even if he did, we do know that Matt does have multiple Dispels in his hand. This is just part of the reason that I, I agree with you and that I just really do like what Matt's deck does. Yeah. So we see a Snapcaster Mage here. We're going to see a little bit of Thought Scour action. Try to get a little more food for that Moreland Haunt, maybe. Get a little pressure on the board without, you know, exposing yourself to, to anything huge. And that's exactly what it looks like he's done. So now he's going to draw a card here. He draws a Thought Scour. It does have an island for a land drop. And in we go. Not willing to trade with his Snapcaster for one of uh, Max's Moreland Haunt tokens. You're seeing Matt doing a very good job of just sort of, all right, answer this. And I pull ahead a little bit further, and a little bit further, yeah. a little bit further. It's nice pacing. Yeah. It really is. As we see a Snapcaster Mage here from Max on Matt's end step. He's going to let it go. And we're going to see a Thought Scour here from Max. Max just... Looking for help, turns over a Geist of St. Shraft and a Thalia draws a Hollowed Fountain. Not what the doctor ordered. Although, you know, flipping over two creatures is, is nice there for, yeah. for your Moreland Haunt, but yeah. Not the draw step that Max wanted, certainly. It's interesting that Moreland Haunt is kind of the card that's keeping both players in this game. It's playing a huge role on both sides. Um, you, you wonder if maybe we're going to see the adaptation of Ghost Quarter anytime soon again. Yeah, especially if these decks are, you know, I mean... Look at look at Max's deck. He has what one basic land in it. Yeah, it would be pretty awesome here. So Max did draw a Thundermoth Hellkite, but is not ready to push with it just yet. So Max is hanging with a Snapcaster and his Spirit. Matt is going to try to Restoration Angel. Go for the old ambush. And this is another example we're talking about with the way Matt's playing, where it's just, you know, even if this goes bad somehow, Max has some sort of trick. It's hard for it to go too badly because he's he's using cards that generate value when they come to play or cantrip or whatever to alleviate Max's pressure. And what you guys saw there is that he did for the Restoration Angel and he blinked the Snapcaster Mage, targeted unsummon with Snapcaster Mage's ability, unsummon the Spirit Token, who makes you go bye-bye forever, and is blocking Restoration Angel, but Max has one of his own that he's attempting to resolve. All right, I'm wondering to see if Matt considers this to be dissipate-worthy, basically. That seems like a fairly good spot. To dissipate, yeah. and it looks yeah. like he's, he agrees with you. So we may see the counterflux here from Max. Okay, nope. He's just nope. gonna let that resolve. Let it go. Let my Snapcaster go bye bye as well. I wonder if he's just trying. If Max is just committed to trying to resolve Thunderball with counterflux backup. Yeah, but really hard to take that route when Moreland Haunt's still at the ready. It's also tough, too, because I think he's got an idea that Matt does have Sphinx's Revelation in his hand, and he certainly can't allow that to resolve either. Yeah. So the counterflux is going to have to do something very good this game. Yeah, Matt's got a ton of very threatening cards. 
as we do see Max make a spirit token trade with a Snapcaster Mage. And it's nice because we saw that Matt was not willing to offer up that trade beforehand, but he's at the point now where he's like, okay, I'm fine with that trade now. Yeah, and he needs a little more food for his Moreland Haunt as well, so. Max with Counterflux, Thundermaw, Hellkite, Howl Fountain, Dragon. We're about to see what kind of response Matt has to this. I guess we're going to Snapcaster or Dissipate. Could be about that time. So we could see the Counterflux here. Yeah, that Snapcaster Mage might just get Counterfluxed here. It's either that or, or the Dissipate. You don't want to give him a free 2-1, so... Yeah. And there's Counterflux. Alright. My Spirit goes bye-bye. Dead -bye. Fortress comes in. How? I mean, I, I assume we're going to be chump blocking here. I don't know if he's got... Does he have Unsummon in his hand? Or... He could go chump blocking or he could just go revelating and basically just ignore that five-point hit and gain all that life back. Yeah, I guess he could revelate with... He could revelate with... Um, the spell back up for five. And it's like he didn't take the hit and got his thing to resolve. I mean, Max is down to one card in hand, so... He's just going to opt to Moreland Haunt, block, and then make another token end of turn. Yeah. And then we could see a much bigger revelation the following turn. Matt draws his card and draws it. looks to be a Cavern of Souls. And he does have that unsummon that she did speak of. There is one in his hand. We'll get confirmation for you guys on what that cavern is naming. But in the meantime, Mr. Nass is going to come across here for four. Going to Mac knock Max down to five, and Angel was the name on Cavern of Souls for Matt Nass. So, Max with a land and a... Couldn't see what the last card was. Yeah, Matt's deck is very impressive to me. It's not bad, it's different. I'm surprised that we haven't really seen something like this. It's kind of like blue-white mid-rangey. You know, Adam Prozac's deck is more of an end-of-turn deck, and that's obviously why it's called Flash, but we haven't seen really a deck like this, it seems like, in a little while. Yeah, and uh, I think I think it can be a deck-building trap, the feeling of, well, there's all these dual lands afforded to me, so I play a bunch of dual lands, and sometimes it's just the two colors uh, afford you all what you need. And there you're going to see a Sphinx of Revelation for four yep. with two Dispels on it. <laughs> but Snapcaster Mage. Probably for, I assume, for Counterflux. Yeah, that seems like it would, what it would be for. Yep. yep. And there is the Counterflux. Matt with... Unsummon and two dispels in this hand. Yep. And we're going to add to that a Geist of Saint Trap. A very unassuming draw, but one that is important here with max of five life. Yeah, I mean, this attack is going to knock. Uh, in with the Restoration Angel, so this is going to get a chump block, a more than hot chump block. Matt, I guess contemplating maybe an unsummon here. We could see an unsummon here, yeah. I think, you know, it's worth keeping the unsummon just as insurance against Max having his own card like Supreme Verdict. Another Thundermaw Hellkite. It's not worth that much to get Max down to two, so you might as well just be conservative. Yeah. It's a. Uh, Something I, I, even if you can't imagine what the card is, there might be something out there that's worth giving your unsummon for. Yeah, that exists. Yeah. That, uh, that spider sense that you spoke of yesterday. Right. Like, is it really worth knocking him down to two here and losing my unsummon? No, probably not. No. We, can, we can do that next turn if we want to. Yeah.
that moving to untap. And he's, I think he's, now he's thinking about that unsummon on Thunderball Hellkite. I'm trying to make a move. Yep. Bink. And... What are we thinking about here? I think it's some of the unhappiness that we may have to pick it up. Yep. We're going to counter flux the on summon. Wow. Didn't think we'd be saying that. Doesn't that, I mean, he doesn't really have a choice, right? Yeah. He's going to just die. So now Matt, now it's a little bit dangerous for Matt because he needs to make sure that he doesn't extend himself so much where he, a, a Thunder Maul on the way back. Like, you know, if Max were to another Thunder Maul, does he just die? He needs to make sure that scenario doesn't occur. There's an Augur Bolas, which could potentially make this turn a little bit easier if Augur can go and find him uh, an unsummon or a feeling of dread. The feeling of dread would be filthy. Unsummon. Okay, there's unsummon. And we're gonna see a bouncing of the dragon. And turn sideways. Don't forget that angel token either. There it is. Matt still with two dispels in his hand. And there's tough a guy. Condition. Tough guy. Oh, there's dispels. <laughs> Real tough guy. So Matt Nass. Two games to one. I think after watching that, that game, we can pretty safely assume that he didn't bring in Jace. He just, uh, yeah. it was only dispel in Supreme Bird. Yeah. Which makes sense against the Thunder Maul Hellkite deck, right? It's just, Thunder Maul Hellkite already has the potential to be good. And if you lean on Jace, you risk even further... <laughs> That card be just blowing you out. So, I really like the way Matt played that third game. Just like an exercise in patience, honestly. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he did a very good job of slowly, slowly pushing his board forward, getting in his shots, getting some good trades, without ever actually exposing himself to huge risk. Yeah. He didn't play, you know, he didn't expose himself to Thunder Mile Hellkite. He protected himself against cards like Supreme Verdict or Unsummon or. Uh, detention sphere, you never really got the impression that there was a draw that Max could have that Matt would be like, oh man, I I didn't play around that. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't see that coming. Right. Yeah. 